Just okay, welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to ahead and uh, ask people to go ahead and settle down into the non-blue marked seats. Um, and as we begin uh, to get ready for this meeting, I won't call us into order exactly yet. Um, I, while we're dialing up uh, the Zoom meeting, um, we are going to take roll because we may have some people in electronically that aren't. Um, in the meeting, and as I said, I've communicated with several members and communicated from the House floor today. If you are uh, attending electronically, uh, we will uh, allow folks to to vote uh, that way. Um, given given the size of the uh, the room, we were we were scared of, of everybody being able to fit in, and I know some people specifically um, said they were going to be in their office and, and give other members opportunity to be here. So we we are going to. Uh, proceed with that. We have um, before us today, we'll be taking up Senate Bill uh, 318 by substitute. You should have that in your packet, LC 490235. There's a sign up sheet down there someplace. And if, if there's not objection, again, we have people that uh, have, have made aware, specifically folks in the university system that, that may be available, available to answer our questions and, and or speak to the bill. Um, they are going to do that remotely just in the interest of, of having less um, individuals in a room to help us with our strategic positioning. Uh, I'm going with strategic positioning because I've heard social distancing one, one time too many. So we're, we're going with the military version of it and call it we're, we're strategically positioned today, six feet apart. So uh, thank everybody for being here. Oh, and that's the greatest thing. You now get to see yourself over there on that monitor with a uh, mask hanging off of your ear. Um, so if, if we're ready here, everybody uh, that, that wishes to speak is signed up. The, the senator's here. I'm going to turn it over uh, to Patrick Levin and let you um, call our roll. Or, well, then hand me your... Uh, if we would follow the same... Um, protocol that we're, we're doing in the in the house chamber if you just sing out with a here uh, or, or if I see you in the room I'll, I'll, I'll um, mark you present um, and at the end we can acknowledge those who are on it right too. right um, Representative Reeves here Kelly Bentley Representative Bentley was here she will be back just put a star by that Bernal here there you are. Um, Dempsey. Here. Dickey. Here. Dreyer. Dubnik. Here. Earhart. Here. Earhart. She is on Zoom. She is going to be on Zoom. Okay. Gardner. Here. Holcomb. Holland. Here. Jaspers. Kausha. Here. Knight. Knight. Mafiak. Here. Metz. Uh, Park. Here. Perkle. Here. President Park, you're always making he's a good on. interest there. You, 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 he was just you, you, I was going oh, there. There you go. Just uh, not on the blue X. Um, Perkle. Here. Smyrie. Washburn. Williams Rick. And the chair is here. Okay. Now I'm going to read. I don't know how we're going to do this, but I'm going to be very, very careful. You know what? I may have just jumped past you, uh, Dr. Clark. I think he he had you in here. I've just uh, skipped over your name. I'm sorry. This this is new. Y'all have to really bear with me. I feel like uh, I've been doing this for a number of years, and yet there, we, we have something completely new here. So I have Reeves, Bentley, Bernal, Clark, Dempsey, Dickey, Dubnick, Earhart, Gardner, Holland, Kausch, Mafiak, Metz, Park, Perkle. Anyone that we've missed to the folks that are looking uh, at the Zoom meeting, do we have any additional folks on Zoom? Okay. Very good. Um, well, then we will move, move forward then in the presentation. Everyone has, um, I don't think we passed out packets today. We'll let you pick up your a bill uh, again to keep with the minimal, minimal touching and, and um, um, getting you the information you need with as little uh, impact as we could. So without further ado, I, Senator, I don't know where they have you presenting from today, perhaps the 
the podium, if you would do that, Senator Ligon, we have LC 490235S. gotten a version earlier but I don't have it with me but I I know that uh, the this committee has previously heard a very uh, similar bill that uh, that it passed out and and uh, I, while I'm not familiar with with that that bill I believe that uh, the, the intent is certainly to comp accomplish the same thing. And what we've seen, uh, unfortunately, even in Georgia, uh, across our, uh, our college campuses is that the rights of students to exercise their uh, the freedom of speech, uh, rights granted to them under the Constitution, has um, run into some difficulty. And we've seen litigation arising out of these claims. In fact, I believe there is uh, currently a suit pending against uh, Georgia Tech out of an issue like that, and someone coming after me perhaps can speak a little more, more to that and to some of those claims. But basically what we want to do is eliminate these so-called free speech zones. And these are zones on our college campuses where students are told this is the only area where you are to exercise your, your free speech rights. And that's not what the First Amendment is about. The bill also recognizes that there need to be reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions. I mean, you can't exercise that right in the middle of a lecture in a classroom, and certainly uh, not outside of a dormitory at 3 a.m. in the morning. You shouldn't be screaming and shouting and disturbing the students that are trying to get rest in order to go to, to class and, and to, 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 to study. So the, all of that is contained in the bill. I mean, I could walk you through it, but I think you've already basically been through uh, the same bill earlier when you passed it out. Now, I, Mr. Chairman, I don't know as far as, I know you've made some changes to the bill and, and um, I don't necessarily feel that I'm qualified or really prepared to address your change, the changes in, in the committee substitute and would be glad to, to defer to you or to, to whoever you, you feel is, should, should address those, the, those points. Senator, I'm having to juggle both of these. I'd leave us on both in the same time, but um, I think it's going to, we're going to have feedback. I'll, I'll be glad to do that. I'll explain. In, in fact, if, if you would um, stand there for a moment, I, I, I probably should have introduced the, the concept that, that we were uh, going with. If I can, to the members, the Senate substitute or the substitute to Senate Bill 318 that you have before you. Um, started with the basis of House Bill 995 that we passed out uh, of this on one of our meetings before we went um, on recess. Um, it does have slight changes to that language. Um, those changes um, are the definition in, in the previous bill, and, and I call your attention to line 40 of the current uh, substitute. Previously in the House Bill, there was a definition for materially and substantially disrupts. Um, the attorney Walker um, ha has changed that so that we are defining what a material and substantial disruption is. And then if one does that activity, that means one is disrupting it's because we had a bit of a circular definition in the materially and substantially disruption. Um, but we, we tried to capture what we had done before uh, we did merge a bit of what was in the Senate bill that wanted some specific instances highlighted. Um, the House bill was a little, gave a little more latitude on campus so that there you find a, a bit of a merger in, in that definition. That is on line 40. It also appears, uh, if the committee will recall, there's, there's two sets of language here. One that uh, applies to the University System of Georgia, another one applies to the technical college system. So that, that mirror language uh, and we can get uh, the attorney to speak to exactly what went on there. Also, we'd call the attention over to page four, line 107. If the committee will recall in the previous version, when we were, this is the association portion of the bill. 
And in the previous version, there was a bit of a double negative. It started out, it had been edited over time. And so that it, it got into no institution shall not. It, there was, it was a bit confusing to read. So what the, the learned attorney done, has done here is to try to um, correct that by, by simply stating a public institution of higher learning shall not deny. And the crux that uh, we're trying to come up with here is every group, regardless of their actual or anticipated uh, expressed activities will be treated the same uh, and, the, and they can be discerning for their leaders and members, um, but they have to do that within the rules of the um, institution and provided however this online 112 provided however that nothing on this part shall be interpreted as preventing the public institutions of higher education from requiring uh, organizations to uh, comply with the rules and then we you know boot, uh, belt and suspenders provided further that these rules do not violate if, if you recall previously we said do not violate the first amendment the speech amendment We've went even further there than we say, do, do not violate anything in the constitutions of the state of Georgia or the United States. That should go without saying, but we, we have it right there in, in black letter law. So those are the two changes in language um, that we have from the house version. And um, if, if committee members have any questions and we're trying to monitor Zoom, um, Mr. Attorney, uh, have uh, Michael Walker, have I explained that correctly? Would you like to opine on that? Are, are there committee questions? Um, to, to, if I can, and then um, we'll, we'll go to uh, Representative Park. Um, it, um, I know the Senator, I know you had some additional language about cause of action. That was not in the previous House bill. We, we have also kept that out of this just to let the members know. You, you get an opportunity, if, if, we, if you get favorable consideration today, we, you, you may choose to wrestle with the House over that in the future, but t today we're, uh, we're back to that version. Uh, Representative Park, what, you are number three. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Senator, for, for the bill. Um, I think all of us can agree the importance of protecting First Amendment free speech rights for our students. Um, if I may, I, I did have two questions. First, could you discuss and, and give us a few more examples about the severity of the problem in which college campuses may be uh, infringing upon students' free speech rights? Georgia Tech case uh, uh, that's pending right now. A student uh, group had asked uh, Coretta Scott King, to, uh, Ms. King, to come in and, and speak, Dr. King's niece, but the student organization said, no, she can't come because she's too religious. And, you know, that's, I mean, why should they get to decide that? Our institutions are to be a place where ideas are exchanged and challenged and, and and certainly there are students that wanted to hear from her and she should have been allowed to come. And that organization should not have had to file suit to assert their, their rights. And we think that this just bill would, would make it clear that uh, free speech is to be honored in, in activities such as that or actions on the part of the university or uh, university organizations is not proper and does not certainly comply with the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. so, Thank you for that for that answer. Um, so I, I wanted to focus in on two specific components of the bill, if I may. Uh, first, on lines 51 to 53, uh, when we're talking about material and substantial disruption, um, you know, part of the definition is that the mere undifferentiated fear or apprehension will not be sufficient uh, to deem um, conduct as as being material or disruptive. Who determines um, that piece? Is that discretion, does that remain with the um, Institution of Higher Learning or USG? If, if I may, in, in, in um, deference to the center, I'll give deference to you if you wish to answer that. That was a, uh, an extension of the, the definition that Mr. Walker came up to, to cover the items better. We had a circular definition in the, the House's version previously. So, Senator, I'll, I'll allow you to answer that question if you want. If you want to uh, hand that off to, to Mr. Walker, I will put put him in the box, put him on the clock, if you will. 
That is correct. This, uh, this definition was revised to try and attempt to harmonize the definitions that were originally in the House Bill 995 that this uh, committee approved prior to the suspension and the definition that was in Senate Bill uh, 318. So this language is substantially similar to what was in Senate Bill mm -hmm. 318, but to specifically answer your question, ultimately the, the analysis there would be did the, the public institution of higher education properly determine that this was something either a mere undifferentiated fear or was something greater than that? Mm -hmm. If the decision to take some official action was based on something that ultimately boiled down to nothing greater than a mere undifferentiated fear, then that would be more likely to create some constitutional difficulties for the public institution of higher education. Okay. If they tried to step in and uh, prevent a speaker or prevent recognition, deny recognition, or take some official action based on that kind of thing, then that would create a, a perhaps a greater likelihood of some constitutional challenges and problems. Mm -hmm. I, I, I asked that question just because I think given the hyper-partisan era in which we live in, um, there are certain organizations in which folks may be fearful of that others are not. And so given the subjective nature of, of whether or not a material or substantial disruption occurs. Um, th th that's kind of the, the gist of, of the question in and of itself. I, I would suggest perhaps the critical term there might be undifferentiated. Okay. And so if it is a, if it, if you could ascribe some reason for the fear, then mm -hmm. that might be something that would differentiate it to say, I am fearful because of mm -hmm. either this activity, this anticipated speech, something that gives you a basis for your fear as opposed to just i am generally afraid of a group that represents something mm -hmm. that would under this definition not be enough to rise to a material substantial disruption so, so chairman if i may one more follow-up question thank you so so th that question kind of dovetails into some of my concerns raised uh, so, some concerns that come to mind from lines 107 to 116. um i think i had problem with language in this uh in a former bill uh, that passed the, uh, the, this committee or that may have been taken out, uh, where it essentially denies an institution of higher education the ability to deny um, a prospective student organization um, from, from official recognition any benefit or privilege, uh, assuming that benefit or privilege includes taxpayer dollars. Does that, again, I think I asked this question last time, would this prohibit a college in Georgia uh, from denying a, a benefit or privilege to a, you know, let, let's use a hypothetical, a neo-Nazi group um, or, or an, a, an Antifa uh, group um, from forming on, on a college campus here in Georgia. Or, or uh, a religious group like happened at uh, North Georgia College would, would be a, an ex a real life example of that where you had a, a group of uh, a Christian sorority and they wanted to to renew their charter and, and or their status to have activities on campus mm -hmm. and they were told well no you cannot do that unless you um, because you're requiring your members to adhere to the Christian faith and so you know you you have to if you're going to protect groups like that then you may have to protect some others as groups as, as well so um, so, Senator, I mean, so, yes. If I may ask, in regards to the real life example, if that Christian organization wanted to discriminate against the LGBTQ community that violated the institution's policies, would this provision allow the institution to continue uh, to um, prohibit that organization from discriminating against LGBTQ students? Yes, the students? institution would need to, to say, listen would have to recognize that, you know, a group, they have certain uh, beliefs that they should be free uh, to follow and adhere to, just like uh, we do here. I mean, in our, our real, in, in, this, uh, in this building, in our legislature, we have two parties. We have a, a, the Democratic and the Republican Party, and we have our own caucuses. And I cannot go to one of your caucus meetings or to a, a, a Democrat caucus meeting because I have not adhered to those, to those principles. And our constitution guarantees the freedom of association. And this bill is just reflecting the principles that are enunciated in, in our United States constitution and in our, in our Georgia constitution. And, you know, we're, we're just bringing this in line with one 
the Constitution and to the real practice that we actually live under here in in this body here and in our state and in our nation. So. Yes, thank you. What is your number? Which on... Okay, then I had number one here somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry, Pat. I thought that was... can, can I go to Rosetta Gardner? She had number one pressed, and I thought number one was down there. So my... they renumbered. Rosetta <laughs> Gardner, you're right. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the senator for trying to make sure that we have free speech. On our, on our campuses. I agree with you that it is extremely important. At our last meeting a long time ago, I remember there were some testimony that the, the uh, cases that you described had been resolved one way or another by the university system. Is well, that still well, true? Um, actually, um, one of them I, may, I believe is still pending, but the one with North, North Georgia was resolved. But the point is, why are we why are we requiring our students to go through that have to go through that process for something that should be guaranteed to them under our constitution? I mean, so it there, there's there's still ongoing litigation as far as I know from the case that was filed back in January or February or maybe March of this year. I, I am um, concerned, and this is more a statement than a question, but as we seek to redefine what disruption is and the language ultimately requires some interpretation by the institution of higher learning. And however that institution interprets or decides what is really disruptive or what is on differentiated fear, I think that opens the university up to even more litigation. So I, I am concerned that, that this, um, we all believe in the First Amendment rights and, and it seems to me that that is the law of the land at this time. So I, I struggle with why we need this le legislation and I fear it will it will actually lead to more lawsuits. Actually, I believe that a lot of the language has been drawn from existing case law. It's been actually bring it into it, bringing it into a statutory form so that it's clear, it's easily accessible, um, and there's no ambiguity or doubt about this for our university officials. And with regard to that uh, language, I believe one of our other witnesses would be able to, to maybe direct you to, to case law that would um, address the section that you're you're concerned about. Well, with all due respect, I, I lawyers can always find an excuse to bring the case. So, I I don't I I really believe this this uh, language will add to the possibility for litigation. So, but thank you for your efforts. Dr. Clark, I'm going to go to you next. Let me just mention. Uh, again, as, as just noticed by my board, number one is usually down there where Dr. Clark is. Now it's not when you press the button. If you're not at one of these tables and you wish to speak, you're going to have to do it the old fashioned way and throw your hand up because you don't have a button to press. So I don't want to, if folks on Zoom have a question, you have a, a, a method uh, electronically to, to raise your virtual hand and we'll, we'll bring you into the conversation as well. Dr. Clark. And you're at microphone number seven, you think? Then, yes. There you go. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for um, coming here today. And again, thank you, um, as my colleagues have stated, for uh, protecting free speech um, and just uh, our First Amendment rights. Um, my question actually is specific to the Georgia Tech case that um, we keep referencing. Um, I looked up the case, and that case is specifically about funding for student organizations. Right. Um, and I am curious if in this bill, as you understand it, does it address funding for student organizations? Because the way I just, um, if you bear with me, the way I understand um, what this bill is seeking to do, the students were still able 
to have their speaker come on campus. The issue at hand was that they want to be reimbursed for the speaking fees mm -hmm. and it was the fees that were denied. And so I'm wondering how this particular legislation sure. fixes that. Well, those, those the fund the, the funds for those fees were avail available to other organizations as well. And um, that funding enabled the, I guess the, the speakers to be brought in and, and free speech to occur. And so the, the thought is that, well, when the funding is denied, then the speech is also denied too. And why did that denial occur? It occurred because of, of the content of that of that particular speech and uh, or the perceived uh, the perception that that in someone else's judgment that the, that the speech was not appropriate and so that's how I think that the connection is here but one of the attorneys that's actually I think more familiar with the case is could address that clearly but that's how I believe that the connection would be made and how this bill would help avoid that in the future. So can I ask a follow up to that? Yes. So um, is it my understanding that in this bill, we seek to take away an institution's discretion on how to distribute funds across different student groups? Again, since we rework that portion of the association bill, if the Senator doesn't mind, I'm gonna let me make a shot at that and then I'll, I'll yield to the Senator. What we seek to do on, on lines 107 and 108 is a public institution of higher learning shall not deny a student organization any benefit or privilege. The fees that are collected with student organizations are, are divvied out, collected the way they decide they, they do that. We don't tell them they have to. I personally might take the position that they shouldn't charge fees and give them to any organizations if, if it were I, but they do that now. And what the bill seeks to do is if you're a valid organization on a campus and, and you have access to X, they can't tell you how to spend X as long as you're abiding by the rules and policies. You know, they can't tell you that Miss King can't come and be compensated for coming because they particularly don't like what she may or may not say. They, they don't have to give you more money. They don't have to pay anybody for it. But if they give you an allotment of money, they can't tell you how to speak. That, that's what we were trying to do um, Senator, when we rework the association clause now, I'll, I'll yield to your original intent, but we weren't trying to tell them they had to do something or direct them, just that you had to treat everybody the same. I mean, you, you, you stated what the bill before you does. So. Yeah, well, this is, I guess, just a follow up to what you're saying. If there is a policy in place at the institution that says that we will not use fees to pay for religious mm -hmm. speakers, does this bill take that policy away? As long as it's across the board, no one can bring in religious speakers. Does this bill now tell an institution you can't do that? That's, I'm just trying to get clarification on what we are now telling universities they can or cannot do. I, I don't, let me, if you don't mind, let me weave that into that. I'm trying to give you an answer, not okay. dodging your question. Okay. Um, so if, if I may, I'm going to ask Attorney Walker to come up and, and ask it. Oh. T today following gosh, too many microphones, so many microphones, so many masks. All right. I'm going to have to ask the question and then turn your microphone on it. At the same. So I think the, the question from Dr. Clark is if, if today there's a policy that says you can have all these organizations across campus, but we treat religious organizations different from agricultural organizations. Is that a policy? that would stand constitutional challenge with or without this legislation. Do you care to opine on that? I will, I will do my best. Uh, a general principle is that the public organizations need to maintain viewpoint neutrality and content neutrality. So as long as they have a set of rules that are uniformly applied and essentially ignore the viewpoint or the content of the speaker, as long as you're not talking about illegal language, uh, fighting words or something like that, that that could arguably just be illegal per se, uh, then um, that could be problematic. Um, I don't know if Senator Ligon has anything to 
but I, yeah, I think that could be problematic if you were to say, no, we're not going to allow religious content that gets into the content or the viewpoint of the speakers and what the public institution is supposed to do is to be viewpoint neutral and to not stand in and say, you can say things like this, you can't say things like this. If you open up your organization to provide a, a public or a semi-public forum, then you essentially are opening it up to anyone who wants to use it. You can apply rules, but those rules have to comport with the constitutions of the state of Georgia and the United States. Board, then it's- Uniform application is yes. gonna be your, your best friend in that case. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Number 20, number 20. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Senator, for your presentation on this legislation. I'm just curious to know, I was sorry, it's a little late coming in from another meeting, but I just want to know uh, what's the University System of Georgia's take on this, on this particular bill now? Well, I don't know where they are. This particular version uh, that is, which is the House substitute, I know that we had, on the Senate version, we worked with them on a lot of issues. There were still some disagreement on several points. Um, but the bill obviously moved out of the Senate. So, is anyone here from the Board of Regents, Mr. Chairman? Um, there's a we have them on. I'm sorry, I don't have it up. I get I'm hearing feedback. I don't know if y'all are, so I'm having to juggle my. We have uh representatives from the university system that are signed up for Zoom to, to give us again that you weren't here when we but to give us more space in the room since they're they're well set up across the street electronically. They can they can provide that. I, I do know that that um, there were some issues in the Senate bill that, that the university had some concern with about personal cause of action. Those things we had out of the original House bill, they are out of this bill. The, the, this bill is the House bill with some language modifications into uh, material and substantially dis disrupt what a material and substantial disruption is and um, removing the double negative uh, language from uh, around lines 107 and, it, and it's in the technical section as well. Um, to make that read better, but uh, we'll we'll have the university system on. We can ask them now. Yeah, what we, we call on to okay. To All right, we're going to try to get somebody on here to speak to us virtually. So uh, hold hold on, everybody. Um, okay, I can I can't have it on at once. So, um, uh, so University of Georgia system. Rick Rowland. Uh, I'm just going to go with you. Good afternoon, Chairman Martin, and good afternoon, um, Representative. Thanks so much for the opportunity to be here. Um, as to the university system's position on this bill, we still take the position um, respectfully that the legislation is not needed, that there are adequate protections in both the US Constitution and the Georgia Constitution. That being said, um, the current version of Senate Bill 318 that has been presented as a substitute today, um, we do believe mirrors federal case law and so we are okay with this current version of the bill okay i have to uh, we may have a question for you brooke if you would uh hang hang with us we can only have we we have to either talk in here or go there so i'm good no no I'm, I'm fine you can ask the question i'm just explaining to brooke how we we turned her off completely while you're getting the question so that's why she went away on the screen oh. yes representative you have a question so my apologies for making you disappear. So, um, uh, so my question is, uh, if you s continue, uh, well, we, we talked about this bill before in, in, in the House in this committee and uh, you uh, your position was that you think that the bill is not needed because we already have the protection under the constitution. Now, if we implement this bill, do you expect any costs affiliated with this bill resulting from the from the, the provisions, for example, I see here in line 121 that you're supposed to educate, provide material. Is there any cost affiliated you expect out of uh, this bill? Okay. We're turning this over to, to Brooke now. Thank you. Um, 
Thank you, Representative. There, there may be some minor cost. Um, our, our policies are already up to date with the First Amendment. There may be some minor cost in terms of orientation training, but it's in, as we've all noted, the First Amendment is incredibly important. Many of our institutions are already doing this training anyway. We're already doing the training for our faculty and staff, so they are our costs that we could handle. So as this current version of the bill, we we feel comfortable with. Thank you again. I, I hate to turn Ms. Bowen off every time I have to turn on the mic. She goes away. Um, any any further questions? We're, we'll call the university back if we need. Um, committee have further questions? Uh, Representative Gardner, your button was pushed, I think, before we went to Ms. Bowen. Do you have a question? Any further questions? S Senator, if not, I'll let you um, reside there for a second and we'll, we'll have the, the speakers come forward. Uh, oh yes, I, I would wish to acknowledge additional members that have joined, uh, Representative Weedauer, Representative Smyrie, Representative Kelly, uh, Representative Dreyer, and Representative Knight. Um, and now we will, I, I would fail miserably as a movie director. I, did, I can tell with all this going around. Um, Chris Bruce from ACLU of Georgia. Mr. Bruce. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the committee, thank you for having me here today. Uh, we just became aware of the Senate substitute. Let me start that. Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Christopher Bruce. I'm the political director for the ACLU of Georgia, an organization dedicated to protecting your civil rights and civil liberties, especially under the First Amendment. So I have a long testimony right here that I'm not going to share. And the reason why I'm not going to share is because a lot of our biggest concerns were actually addressed in the Senate substitute. However, we still believe that this, um, this piece of legislation is not needed as the University of System of Georgia has already stated. So I'll um, hold my remarks for you and look and see how it works out with the committee, but I am here as a resource as well on behalf of the ACLU. Thank, thank you, Mr. Bruce. If, if I can, just to, to clarify your remarks, you, you had some issues with the, the Senate bill as it came out, the, the, the House version, the, the version you have in front of you that we've overlaid the House version with the current changes. Um, I won't say I won't put words in your mouth that you're supportive of, but you, you're you're um, more friendly to that. It, it took care of some of your concerns. Is that fair? Because I, I just wanted to capture the difference between the, the Senate substitute. It's the one the bill we have before us today gives you more um, peace, if you will, than than um, than you previously had this morning. Dive into the Senate substitute, but it seems like and one of our biggest concerns was about the university making sure that discrimination and hatred was not promoted. And we believe that the Senate substitute at this time may address that. So we may come back later with something different as far as we go down with legal precedents, bringing up the case that happened in Kennesaw State University with the cheerleaders who were kneeling and that cost uh, taxpayer dollars, a lot of money. So again, still believing that this piece of legislation is not necessary, but going into a deeper dive, we can come back with further comments. Thank you. Uh, would, would the gentleman stand for questions? If there are any, you're not required to do so. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Are, the, are there questions? I see none. Thank you very much. Nobody likes to ask questions, <laughs> but I'm here. Nobody, I think maybe people are, are getting wary of, of wearing the mask. I am too. Um, getting warm in here. Uh, Tony West from a AFPA of Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the committee, my name is Tony West. I'm the Deputy State Director for Americans for Prosperity Georgia. Um, I encourage this committee to support Senate Bill 318 because it will ensure Georgia's public universities no longer have policies that unconstitutionally infringe upon students' lawful speech and expression. This bill will strengthen our universities and protect our taxpayers by ensuring that schools adhere to the First Amendment. You, you heard my testimony a few months ago, but in light of some recent events, I wanted to contextualize a little bit how I think this bill could posit positively impact our state and our schools. This forum legislation is going to protect the First Amendment on campus, regardless of how uncomfortable it may be. 
So in the context of what our country's working through right now, this means daughters of police officers and sons of alleged victims will be in the classes, classroom together, holding uncomfortable conversations that will help us learn, grow, and enact needed reforms. This bill will allow that to happen more successfully. If you look at line 121, campus police officers will be trained to make sure that they know what is expected of them and what protection students have on campus. That's something that's being dis discussed in our country right now in other manners. We're witnessing right now how important it is for people to speak out on critical issues of the day without fear of retribution or punishment from our government or those who act on behalf of our government. And this bill is critical to ensuring that speech is protected for our college students on our public university campuses. It's not just students on our campuses who are gonna benefit from the robust debate that will occur if Senate Bill 318 becomes law. All of us will benefit because today's college students are tomorrow's members of this committee, our judges, our teachers, and our community leaders. And by not just teaching them about our First Amendment freedoms, but providing them an opportunity to exercise those freedoms, our universities will create future leaders of our state who are open to dialogue and open to debate. So for that reason, I encourage you to vote yes today Thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you, Mr. West. You have no questions. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, what's your number? Uh, do you have a number? Uh, there should... uh, two, two. Two, two. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, can... Hold on. Thank you. You referenced uh, earlier testimony. I just, I just want to ask, I guess, Two, two brief questions. One, have there been any incidences since the, the testimony on Representative Bonner's bill where First Amendment rights were um, oppressed in any way on college campuses that you're aware of? Since that testimony, just the one, to my knowledge, became public, and that was the Georgia Tech incident that Senator Lickin just mentioned. Okay, well, how was that resolved? Um, my understanding is that litigation's pending, but I believe uh, another uh, person providing testimony can actually give you the full details of that. Okay, I'll, I'll wait for that. Thank you. Um, Chairman Dreyer, I know that that's an ongoing case. I've mentioned that. I think uh, th they're probably not going to comment on an ongoing court, uh, ongoing case matter at this time. Uh, we, we can probably do that. Um, moving uh, along the agenda, that that is our speakers uh, that we had. Um, uh, the university has not raised their hand that they wish to opine any further or the University System of Georgia. So with that, um, we have heard this. This is the, the, the bill with the changes I mentioned that the, the House has seen before. Um, it, given the, the, the recess situation and the time that we're moving forward, I'm going to uh, ask if the, the what I'm sorry. Okay, I would. Uh, we have another joinee, uh, another member joined Representative Scott Holcomb, uh, if, you, if those that are keeping a, a list. Uh, so at this time, does this committee wish to take action on LC 490235S? Is there action? I have a motion and a second. Let me re repeat that because uh, Mr. Love points out I, I may have misspoke. SB 318, LC 490235S. You concur with your motion, Mr. Kelly? Mr. Reeves, I have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion on the motion? Okay. No, we're, I, we, I use it. Just to be clear, the, the, um, Mr. Love points out this is by committee substitute. I referenced the LC number, so that, that was my intent. It is by committee substitute with LC 490235S. Uh, is there a discussion on the motion? Discussion, motion is uh, due pass recommendation. In, no further discussion. Okay, we're gonna have to do this with a roll call. Um, so if you would, we've been practicing this on the floor all day. Um, yeah, we, we're gonna have to go back and forth on Zoom, uh, the folks that are on Zoom. Um, Representative Kelly. Aye. Representative Reeves. Aye. Representative Bentley. Representative Bernal, am I going too fast for you? Oh, no. No, no, I know you guys, are, I'm, I was asking Mr. Love here. Um, Thank you. Uh, Representative Clark. Representative Clark. Yeah. Representative Dempsey. Uh, Representative Dickey. Uh, 
Representative Dubnik. All right, we're going to Representative Earhart on Zoom. Representative Earhart, you're on mute, unmute your machine. And... We, we will come back to the Zoom folks. I, I told them I was gonna give them every opportunity and I'm gonna do that. Um, so we're, we will come back to Representative Earhart on Zoom. Representative Gardner. Representative Holland. No. Representative Kausha. No. Representative Mathiak. Yes. Representative Metz. No. Representative Park. No. We're back to, uh, uh, for, for those that are driving Zoom for us, Representative Perkle. Yes. Well done, Representative Perkle. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I love the mask. Representative Weedauer. Uh, on, from Zoom, Representative Smyre. Representative Smyrie, we will also come back to Representative Smyrie. Um, Representative Dreyer, back to Zoom for those that are driving Zoom for us. Representative Knight. Yes. Uh, again on Zoom, Representative Hawkum. No. Equally well done, Representatives uh, Knight uh, and Hawkeye. Okay, we have, uh, we're going to loop back for the Zoom uh, control room. Representative Earhart. So, so all these issues right here that were provided. If, if, if you can hear, give us a visual sign, um, and we're going to get Representative, Representative Earhart, give us a visual sign, and we're going to get uh, Representative Gardner to uh, look over this for us. Yeah. Representative Earhart is recorded as an aye. Um, Representative Gardner, you concur with that, right? You saw the, uh, okay. Going back, Representative Smyrie. Is Representative Smyrie back on? All right, so DCH. Representative Smyrie, I see, I don't see him st wow. still on the line. Um, okay, let's call. All right, to, well, just a, a, an abundance of caution. I have for the bill Kelly Reeves, Dempsey, Dickey, Dubnick, Mafiak, Purple, Weedauer, Knight, Earhart, against the bill, Bentley, Bernal, Clark. Gardner, Holland, Kausha, Metz, Park, Dreyer, Holcomb. Is there anyone that is, I'm sorry. Okay, um, is there anyone that has not been recorded? Uh, I'm, I'm getting there, we're, we're just, hang on, this is new to me. All right, Any anyone that we have called upon that has not been recorded, not, if not, uh, we're calling the roll. Representative Jaspers on, on Senate, by substitute Senate Bill 318, LC 49023, 35 S yeah. is an I. Does that, that conclude? We, we had her up there as a star for a moment, Representative Earhart. If you would total those. Yeah. Okay. And, and that puts with our. That, that, that can, okay. The, the, the motion passes 11 to 10. Uh, the, the bill moves forward with a due pass recommendation. Um, that is the last item we have on the on the um, agenda this afternoon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, keep keep in mind of a meeting on Monday. Representative Metz has a study committee. She would like us to look over. She talked about it today, so keep in mind. I will uh, meet on Monday at, at the Representative Metz call if she wishes to hear that study committee. We're going to look for a meeting on Monday. With that, no further business before the committee will stand adjourned without objection. Thank you for everyone on Zoom. Thank you for the Zoom production crew. Without objection, we are adjourned.
What happened? What, what happened with that? Was that discussion only? Was that discussion only? We didn't vote, did we? Okay.